logger uses a chainsaw to cut down a towering Douglas fir tree. Nearby, a skitter pulls foul then trim tree trunks across a creek. A crew cab pickup races onto the site. The driver leans out the window. Murdoch! A logger nods. All right, get it on out. Murdoch waves the skitter on. Keep it going, okay, that's it, uh... What happened to those extra men you were gonna hire? Hey, forget it, Kojak. The more guys we hire, the better chance we gotta get caught. If you like getting paid, you'll do as I say. And don't worry, no one's found out since we started this, and no one's gonna find out. Yeah. Take her in. Murdoch directs the skitter back into the creek. Dr. Grant Roberts drives an open Vancouver Aquarium Jeep across a bridge into the city. At the aquarium, he sets an otter pup on a laboratory bench. Danger Bay, with narrative description by the Accessible Channel. Grant pilots a Vancouver Aquarium motor cruiser across the bay, starring Donnelly Rhodes as Grant Doc Roberts. A float plane passes Grant's boat as it takes off from the bay. Susan Walden is J.L. Duval. JL pilots a harbor air chopper as it lifts off from a helipad. At the aquarium, a killer whale jumps high out of a pool. Also starring Christopher Crabb as Jonah. And Ocean Hellman as Nicole. With Michelle B. Chan as Dr. Donna Chen. And Haken Beggs as Dr. George Dunbar. Grant with a garden hose and he shakes his head as he hugs them both. Timber. Guest star Bruce Greenwood. Teleplay by Aubrey Solomon. Story by Joshua Miller. Directed by Michael Berry. Come on, you guys, let's go. Jonah enters the kitchen. I'm ready, Dad. We're waiting for Nicole. Come on, Nicole. Danger. We're only going into town for the day. Grant strides over to the phone. Hello. He turns to the kids and grimaces. Mr. Hartog, Fish and Wildlife. There it goes. What? The music video I was going to get. They'll be all sold out by the time we get to town. I'll be out there as soon as I can, Inspector. Right. Grim-faced, Grant walks over to the kids. Well, I guess you gathered that something is up. Mm, that something last week was the birth of those seal pups. Sorry, I guess that cancels out our trip to town. What is it this time? They want me to go investigate the salmon population in the Timberlands. Seems that the spawning level is down dangerously, and I have to go up there and investigate right away. Can we come with you? That's logging country, and I'm doing a term paper on forestry. That's great with me. How about you, Nicole? I don't know. We'll be staying with Ranger Davis. Great, he's a nice guy. Does that mean I'm gonna have to listen to more of those dumb stories about how he shot the Bigfoot monster? They aren't stories, they're true. Oh, give me a break, Jonah. No one said you have to listen. Anyway, it will be fun. Oh, okay. Come on, let's go get packed. Later, high in the mountains, a river spills down a hillside. Grant collects a murky water sample in a plastic cup. What is it? An awful lot of silt. It could be smothering the eggs. The river's usually full of spawning salmon this time of year. Dad, come here. Look at this. Grant picks up his field kit, and he and Jonah walk over to join Nicole. What do you think, Dad? I've never seen so many dead salmon. Grant crouches down to examine them. What killed them? They probably died naturally. Here. He takes a fresh water sample from among the salmon. He holds it up to show the kids. Now these eggs were smothered by the silt. Is there anything we can do? We've got to find out where the silt that's causing this sedimentation is coming from. If we can't control it, we could lose all the salmon in this region. That would be awful. Later, as Grant looks up from his microscope, Ranger Davis and the kids walk into the ranger station. Did you find anything, Grant? Nothing that would prevent the salmon from spawning. Then it must be the silt. Davis steps outside as a jeep pulls in. Hey, 
Pete, I just went by that logging camp. They're still not shut down for those violations. That's because there weren't any. They step inside. I was there. There's debris all over the place. It's going to impact on new growth. Uh, look, Sam, I'm busy with Doc Roberts here. Uh, can't I wait a minute? Oh, that's okay, Pete. Uh, I can't do anything until the morning. Grant Roberts, this is Sam Hayes. They shake hands. Hi. Sam is with the Evergreen Foundation. Oh, yeah, I've heard of your group. You're the ones that are trying to get a restriction on all the logging in this area. Yeah, we're not just trying to. We're going to get it. And these are Grant's kids. This is Jonah. Jonah. And Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi. You guys on a camping trip? No, we're doing a job for the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife. Oh, well, if I can give you a hand, I'd be happy to. Thanks for the offer. Have there been any forest fires, uh, heavy rainfall, or flash floods in this area recently? No, we've been sticking pretty much to averages lately. Uh-huh. Well, something's causing the sedimentation in that river. Well, have you checked into illegal logging? You have to take Sam with a grain of salt. He blames everything from the number of black flies to bad phone service on loggers. Well, seriously, if there's somebody logging along a stream path, it's going to cause a lot of debris, and that's going to be a problem. I don't know of any operation like that. Or any loggers who'd risk losing their licenses, violating the law. Well, there doesn't seem to be any other leads, so uh, it's worth giving it a shot. The person you want to talk to is Jake McGuire. McGuire. He's the head Jippo. Jippo? Independent loggers. He's right. Of course he's right. Nicole and Jonah exchange a grin. Meanwhile, a logger fells a tree. Across the mountainside, tall Douglas firs topple to the ground. A giant grappler picks up a delimbed tree trunk. Nearby, chainsaw teeth bite into a trunk a meter wide. Heavily loaded with massive trim trunks, a logging truck bounces along the crude road, bulldozed into the hillside as the Roberts family pulls onto the site. The Roberts watch from Grant's Jeep as the truck rolls past to transport its load down the mountainside. The smallest logs are the diameter of telephone poles. The family gets out of the Jeep and picks its way across the torn up ground. Nearby, the site foreman records his tally in a notebook as he walks over to his pickup truck. Reaching inside, he calls a break. 15 minutes, guys. He sounds an air horn. Morning. The Roberts walk over to him. Morning. Dr. Grant Roberts. Jake McGuire, what do you need, Doc? Well, I was told that you could help me. Well, that depends upon who told you. Pete Davis? I'm investigating the possibility of some illegal logging operation. You another one of those eco-freaks? No, I'm doing a job for the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife. Well, it's all the same bunch of bananas to me. I'm afraid I can't waste any more man hours, John, with you guys. Mr. McGuire, if somebody's breaking the law, there could be disastrous effects. I'm getting sick and tired of everything being blamed on us jippos. You guys come out from the city, take one breath of fresh air, and then decide nobody should touch another blade of grass. We all got families to support, and this is the way we do it. I'm not accusing you of anything, Mr. McGuire. There's heavy debris that's causing sedimentation of the river gravel beds. The salmon are spawning, but the eggs and larvae are suffocating and dying because of the silt. The whole population of these rivers could be wiped out. I'm a logger, Dr. Roberts. My business is timber, not fish. <laughs> he walks away. Give me a break. OK, guys, back to work. Let's go, kids. As the Roberts return to their Jeep, Murdoch, the foreman of the road logging crew, watches them with keen interest. As they get into their vehicle, Murdoch gets into his pickup and maintains his watch on them. Grant pulls out onto the logging road, and Murdoch follows in his truck. Down at Kuchak Real Estate. I'm telling you, the guy is on to us. Don't panic, Murdoch. Yeah, but he keeps asking too many questions. And not getting any answers. OK. I say we pack up the equipment and get out while we can. I'm the one in charge here, not you. Understand? All right, all right. 
Kuchak grins confidently. Meanwhile, an engine is examined. Do you think McGuire would have cut this hose? No way. I've known him for years. One of the most honest, reliable jippos around. Maybe it was one of his men. Sam pulls into the ranger station as Grant examines his cut radiator hose. I came as soon as I got your message. Thanks, Sam. Frankly, I'm not surprised. It can get real rough if you try and buck the loggers. No wonder. You're threatening this area with economic extinction. There's nothing but timber here. These jippos are fighting for their lives. So are the trees, Pete. I don't think the jippos had anything to do with this. Whoever did this figures that I'm onto their illegal operation. So what are you going to do now? Well, we still have to find out where that sedimentation's coming from. Start at the bottom. Let's go. Dad, we'll have the Jeep fixed by the time you get back. <laughs> Thanks, son. Thanks, Pete. As Grant gets his field kit from his Jeep, Nicole hands Jonah a wrench. Leaning over the engine, he looks to Davis. So what do we do first? Later, branches float along a bubbling river, and logging debris clutters the banks and the riverbed. Sam and Grant survey the damage below a hillside covered in slash. They move upriver, and Grant dips a plastic container into the water to take a sample. They look at the brackish water sample and move further upriver. Here, the river is strewn with logging debris. They wade across. I think we're getting closer. Later, they eat lunch beside a mountain lake. You know, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about keeping a good ecological balance, but I think there must be some way to do it without killing the local economy. No, I fear there is selective logging. The mature trees are cut, leave the young ones to replenish the forest, then there's proper disposal of debris to promote new growth. Aren't there laws on the book already to cover that? Yeah. And those laws were uh, agreed to by both the environmentalists and the loggers? Yeah, they were, but there's some companies that won't pay the price to do it right. I don't think that's a reason to ban all logging. Well, actually it is. Until the loggers start playing by the rules that everybody agreed on, they should be suspended. I mean, we look at it this way. It takes decades for a forest to grow and only weeks to cut it down. We don't have much time. We better get going. Yeah. Sam starts his jeep. At the legitimate logging site. All right, all you want to do is have a job, right? Murdoch is right stirring work, up the crew. Right? Some pretty boy comes from the city, tells you you can't do it? I'm telling you, this Roberts guy is just like Hayes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's going to go back to the city, get on all them news shows, and tell them about how we're destroying the Timberland. Yeah, right, right. Well, I say anybody who helps this guy deserves to be kicked out, right? Right. Yeah, right. There ain't no Jippo betray his brothers, right? Right. Am I right? Right. You're right? The sign reads, private property, do not enter. Well, we can't go in legally. Yes, we can. If a water source is being threatened, I have the right to investigate and the authority to take action. Grant gets out of the Jeep. He raises the crude log gate and swings it aside to let the Jeep through. Then he climbs back in beside Sam. Across the valley, a half dozen waterfalls spill down the mountainside. Later, the jeep kicks up a cloud of dust on a logging road. Brand new muffler, huh? Yeah, it's a lifetime warranty. They survey their surroundings. <clears throat> what a waste. There's no way a new generation of trees is going to grow here. Yeah, this is bad. I mean, look at us trees and gouges and stumps crumbled stream beds. It's a dead forest. They get out of the jeep and walk down to examine a damaged stream bed. See, a legitimate logging operation would have built skid roads to haul all the logs out of here, but a cut rate operation like this just abuses the existing stream pads. Well, we've got to find out who owns this property. That's no problem. Really? Evergreen has files on every square inch of this timberland. I'll just call the office. Let's go do it. Later at Kuchak Real Estate. Logging? On my land? I don't know anything about it. No, we saw it with our own eyes. You should know what's happening on your own property, Mr. Kuchak. That parcel's 400 square miles. I can't watch over it day after day. You know, if you're responsible for abusing those streams, you'll be prosecuted. I told you I'm in real estate, not timber. No, we know you tried to get Jippos in there last year to log that same area. 
Yeah, but because of that ecology mumbo-jumbo, it would have cost too much. No, because you weren't willing to build skid roads and do it within the law, but you've obviously found some jippos who care more about bucks than they do about the forest. How do you know it isn't one of those jippos who's doing it behind my back? We don't. Then you've got no right coming in here and accusing me. You're right. We need proof. Grant and Sam leave the office, and Kuchak grins to himself as he sits back down behind his desk. Later, a heavily laden logging truck motors down a narrow logging road. At the illegal site, mechanical grapplers dump huge logs into the lake. High on the slopes, a trucker negotiates a switchback turn on the rough logging road as skidders and grapplers continue to gather logs. Rather than truck them down the mountain, the crew dumps them into the lake. At a lake nearby... We know Kuchak's working his land, but we have to prove it. Well, you'll not get much help from the Jippos. They, they see you as the enemy. Well, maybe you can give us some leads. Like what? Well, are there any Jippos bringing in more logs than they should? Like, uh, they got some action on the side? That's, that's tough to figure. They, they bring in whatever they can fell. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. You got any idea who could be working for this Kuchek? Well, to me, they're all good men. Of course, I don't know every one of them personally, but uh, I couldn't say who was the rotten apple in the bunch. You got any idea how we could find out? Well, the only idea I have is equipment. He must have some equipment on that place of his to help with the logging. Well, if we can find the equipment and trace it, the registration back to Kuchak, we've got him. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to do that. It's over 400 square miles. I'll call a meeting of the men tonight. We'll see what we can do. Oh, thanks, Mr. LaBelle. Uh, you know, you're the first ray of hope we've had. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Doc. Shaking LaBelle's hand, Sam and Grant leave. LaBelle waves a farewell. Well, that's good. With LaBelle's help, we can find that equipment and put Kuchek out of business. Overhearing Grant's remark, Murdoch watches them cross the site. Eyeing the pair, he walks over to a loaded skitter as Grant and Sam pass in front of it. Grabbing a pry bar, he knocks the pin out of the safety latch that secures the load. Then he climbs into the cab and starts the engine. The massive logs break free. The logs tumble toward them, and Sam trips and falls as they run for their lives. The colossal logs roll over everything in their path. As several tons of logs careen across the site, Grant and a couple of loggers pull Sam to safety, and Murdoch jumps down from the skitter unnoticed. The logs broke loose. Oh, that's impossible. Well, they broke loose. Somebody sprung the latch. I think you guys had better get rid of this animosity before somebody gets hurt or maybe even killed. He's right, you guys. Logging's dangerous business. There's no use working against each other, too. Could we just stop all this dancing around and maybe try to work together for a change? What do we get out of helping him? You help me lay this on the landowner, and I promise I'll work for immunity for any logger that was involved. I promise to do that. Look, fellas. Illegal logging hurts everybody. It kills the forests, but it also gives those lawmakers exactly what they need to push for a ban on all logging. And you guys are out of a job. Now, all Sam Hayes and I are asking is for a little help to find that equipment that those guys were using before they can get it out of there. Now, if everybody here was to split up and help us look for it, we might have a chance. That's all we're asking, so what do you say? Will you give us a hand? I'm with them. <laughs> Me too, eh? Sure, sounds good. Come on. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Hey, where's Murdoch? He was on my rig a while ago. Sam glances significantly at Grant. Moments later, they race away from the site, followed by truckloads of loggers. Meanwhile, Murdoch's truck slides around a turn as he races up the mountain. Ku 
chap jumps out and hurries to open the gate across the road. Murdoch barely slows as Kuchak jumps back in and they race on. The truck bounces violently along the increasingly rough road. At the illegal site, they jump out. Come on, let's move it. That search party's on our tail. They pull back the netting, camouflaging a skitter. Meanwhile, the convoy of loggers trails Sam's jeep up the road. Murdoch climbs into the cab of the skitter. As he raises the blade, Ranger Davis arrives to join the convoy at the gate. You hear that? Yeah. Let's go! Sam moves out and the rest of the vehicles follow. As Murdoch drives the skitter out of its hiding place, Kuchak loads chainsaws into the back of the pickup. The convoy snakes its way up the serpentine logging road. As Murdoch drives the skitter fast across the site, Kuchak finishes loading the pickup. Glancing over his shoulder, he jumps behind the wheel just as Murdoch turns onto the logging road. Moments later, Sam's jeep and the skitter speed toward a head-on collision. At the last moment, Murdoch loses control and drives into a rock, launching himself out of the cab. Grant and Sam see him sprawled motionless on the skitter's hood. There's Kuchak. Kuchak spins his wheels as he fishtails up the logging road, and Sam takes off in pursuit. As Sam closes the gap, Kuchak spots him in his mirrors. Sam pushes hard, crowding Kuchak's bumper through a turn. Grant leans out of the Jeep as Sam pulls up beside the pickup. Grant reaches for the pickup but misses. He grabs onto the truck, but Kuchak swings away. Sam moves up and Grant leaps onto the pickup's bumper and clings to the tailgate. Kuchak tries to shake him off, but Grant hangs on and climbs over the tailgate into the bed. Inching up to the cab, he swings over the side, opens the driver's door, and grabs Kuchak. Kuchak clings to the wheel, but they both tumble out onto the road and the truck rolls to a halt at the side of the road. Grant gets to his feet and limps over to Kuchak. Meanwhile, Loggers gently pass Murdoch through the cab of the skitter and hand him down to awaiting Ranger Davis who takes him into custody. Davis looks over to see Sam's jeep approaching. Leaving Murdoch in the custody of his fellow loggers, he walks over to meet the jeep. Kuchak is in back behind Sam. There you go. Two for the price of one. <laughs> Well, if we can get some peace around here, it'll have been worth it. A grin on his face, McGuire leads his crew over. So, Mr. McGuire, we did this one together, with Doc Roberts' help. Maybe the loggers and the Evergreen Foundation can work together. McGuire looks at his men and they nod. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. That's what teamwork's all about. McGuire grins at Grant and nods. This program has been described by the Accessible Channel. Executive producer, Paul Saltzman. Executive script consultant, John T. Dugan. Supervising producer, John M. Eckert. Post-production producer, Paul Quigley. Guest cast, Davis, Walter Learning, Murdoch, Gary Chaw, Kuchak, Campbell Lane, McGuire, B.A. Smitty, Smith, LaBelle, Franklin Johnson. Associate producer, Elizabeth Ponsa. Production manager, Harold Tickenor. Music composed and conducted by Don Gillis. Music supervised by David Green. Executive in charge of production for the CBC, Nada Harcourt. Special thanks to Van Vancouver Public Aquarium, British Columbia Hydro Corporation, produced in association with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the Disney Channel, Telefilm Canada, produced by Danger Bay Productions Incorporated, copyright 1984. Pop on a laboratory bench. Danger Bay, with narrative description by the Accessible Channel. Grant pilots a Vancouver Aquarium motor cruiser across the bay, starring Donnelly Rhodes as Grant Doc Roberts. A float plane passes Grant's boat as it takes off from the bay. Susan Walden is J.L. Duval. 
JL pilots the Harbor Air Chopper as it lifts off from a helipad. At the aquarium, a killer whale jumps high out of a pool. Also starring Christopher Crabbe as Jonah. And Ocean Hellman as Nicole. With Michelle B. Chan as Dr. Donna Chen. And Haken Beggs as Dr. George Dunbar. Grant with a garden hose and he shakes his head as he hugs them both. What is it? An awful lot of silt. It could be smothering the eggs. The river's usually full of spawning salmon this time of year. Dad, come here. Look at this. Grant picks up his field kit and he and Jonah walk over to join Nicole. What do you think, Dad? I've never seen so many dead salmon. Grant crouches down to examine them. What killed them? They probably died naturally. Here. He takes a fresh water sample from among the salmon. He holds it up to show the kids. Now these eggs were smothered by the silt. Is there anything we can do? We've got to find out where the silt that's causing this sedimentation is coming from. If we can't control it, we could lose all the salmon in this region. That would be all timber. Guest star Bruce Greenwood. Teleplay by Aubrey Solomon. Story by Joshua Miller. Directed by Michael Berry. Come on, you guys, let's go. Jonah enters the kitchen. I'm ready, Dad. We're waiting for Nicole. Come on, Nicole. Sorry, I had to leave some food for danger. We're only going into town for the day. Grant strides over to the phone. Hello. He turns to the kids and grimaces. Mr. Hartog, Fish and Wildlife. There it goes. What? The music video I was going to get. They'll be all sold out by the time we get to town. I'll be out there as soon as I can, Inspector. Right. Grim-faced, Grant walks over to the kids. Well, I guess you gathered that something is up. Mm, that something last week was the birth of those seal pups. Sorry, I guess that cancels out our trip to town. What is it this time? They want me to go investigate the salmon population in the Timberlands. Seems that the spawning level is down dangerously, and I have to go up there and investigate right away. Can we come with you? That's logging country, and I'm doing a term paper on forestry. That's great with me. How about you, Nicole? I don't know. We'll be staying with Ranger Davis. Great, he's a nice guy. <sighs> Does that mean I'm going to have to listen to more of those... Dumb stories about how he saw the Bigfoot monster. They aren't stories, they're true. Oh, give me a break, Jonah. No one said you have to listen. Anyway, it will be fun. Oh, okay. Come on, let's go get packed. Later, high in the mountains, a river spills down a hillside. Grant collects a murky water sample in a plastic cup. A logger uses a chainsaw to cut down a towering Douglas fir tree. Nearby, a skitter pulls foul then trimmed tree trunks across a creek. A crew cab pickup races onto the site. The driver leans out the window. Murdoch! A logger nods. All right, get it on out. Murdoch waves the skitter on. Keep it going, okay, that's it, sir. What happened to those extra men you were going to hire? Hey, forget it, Kojak. More guys we hire, the better chance we gotta get caught. If you like getting paid, you'll do as I say. And don't worry, no one's found out since we started this, and no one's gonna find out. Yeah. Take her in. Murdoch directs the skitter back into the creek. <laughs> Dr. Grant Roberts drives an open Vancouver Aquarium Jeep across a bridge into the city. At the aquarium, he sets an auto.